tomorrow marks the five-year anniversary of the BP oil spill. Tonight, John Snell reports the company and environmentalists paint radically different views of life in and around the Gulf of Mexico. Tar balls frequently dot Gulf Coast beaches five years after the spill. Earlier this month, just as BP released a report heralding the Gulf's recovery, news crews approaching East Grand Terre Island stumbled onto workers mopping up a nearly 30,000 pound tar mat, a mix of sand and BP oil. We have to have you stay away from the hazardous material at the moment, so it is a clean up site. In April of 2010, BP struggled to manage the extreme forces in its well, miles below the Gulf surface. Concrete seals put in to stop gas from flowing up the drill pipe failed. The blowout preventer on the sea floor failed. And a giant gusher of oil and gas rocketed up to the surface. Eleven men died. For 87 days, the well belched millions of gallons of crude as the world watched. Be from this point okay. up. Since then, the industry has shown off its new oil spill response. The 911 system for offshore drilling, including a brand new capping stack designed to shut off oil spilling from a failed well. Equipment that did not exist on April 20th, 2010. We should be able to place one of these capping stacks on the well and shut it in. Last week, the government, no doubt mindful of the anniversary, announced tougher standards for the blowout preventers designed to slam shut on a failing well and prevent explosion. Ironically, the Gulf spill produced a gusher of BP fine money for coastal restoration and research. Nearly five and a half billion dollars so far, with billions more to come depending on the outcome of a federal trial. Some of the money has already rebuilt barrier islands. But some places that took on oil will never come back. While it was possible to travel for miles along the coast during the height of the spill and never see oil, crude piled into places like Barataria Bay, steered by winds and currents. Four islands in Cat Bay, once home to thousands of nesting birds, in the bullseye of the oil, virtually vanished. Today, one colony of birds clings to disappearing real estate. You get in the marsh and it breaks your heart. BP insists tarmats today simply exist in pockets. It knows where they are, and the government decided it was better to let them become naturally exposed, then deal with them. So as they appear, we are finding them and removing them, but none of them poses a threat to human or aquatic life. Environmentalists argue oil will continue to pile on to beaches for years to come. However long it goes on, the company is committed to cleaning up that which is exposed and that which is Macondo oil. Last week, the respected Hart Institute in Corpus Christi, Texas, praised the Gulf's resilience, comparing it to a rubber band snapping back into place after a test of strength. Hart says many of the Gulf's most iconic species, crabs, shrimp, and oysters, show no lasting effects from the spill. That is news to Louisiana oyster processors who blame the spill for idling much of their business. The company blames the state's decision to run freshwater diversions wide open in an attempt to push back oil. The big question is, what about the stuff that's on the bottom of the Gulf? What about the stuff that's on the bottom of Barataria Bay? No one's ever going to find it. Other environmental researchers point to sea turtle populations, which had been recovering pre-spill, but now show signs of sliding again. Dolphin deaths in Barataria Bay now occur at four times the historic rate. Yeah, I would agree that the Gulf is extremely resilient, but there are, there are some things that you maybe just can't come back from. Five years later, the debate rages about the long-term effects of America's worst offshore oil disaster. John Snell, Fox 8 News.